Wow, museum nerd, huh? Sometimes. Sometimes. Well, I didn't know you were going to be seeing me or I would have made sure to look extra nice. Come on over and say hi. It's lit. I I will. Adrian wants to say hi before we start. Yay, Adrian. Hi. Hi, Adrian. How are you doing today? Good. How are you? Awesome. Awesome. Did you see your videos from Houston? Yeah. Pretty awesome. Are you happy? Mm Mm-hmm. You did a great job. Everybody was super proud and super impressed. Thank you. You should be proud. Are you proud? Yeah. Good. Well, we had a lot of fun and hopefully we'll see you on some more TV soon. September, she's coming back. Coming back, you're gonna, we're gonna see you in New York? Yeah. Oh, awesome. What are you gonna, what are you gonna ask the Surgeon General? You say, what should I ask the Surgeon General? What should I ask? <laughs> you should ask the Surgeon General. You should say, Madam Surgeon General, I am the author of a new book called Advice from the Doctor's Daughter, My Adventures with PTSD and ADHD and seizures and whatever else is in the title. It's a long title. And um, I would just like to know what advice you have for kids who are struggling with these issues. And then she'll say whatever you're going to, whatever she's going to say. I mean, it's the obvious question to ask. Yeah. It's an obvious question to ask. (laughs) Very good. Very good. (laughs) Obvious for me, I, because I ask these questions all the time. You know, don't don't feel bad. I look, all this stuff is obvious to me because this is what I do. This is what I, <laughs> why I get paid a lot of money because this is what I do. So I'm glad that we could go through this so that you could ask the correct question. Me too. Yeah. Okay. Good. Uh, make sure. You know, make sure you have appropriate costume. You want to look good because you're going to be looking at these pictures for a long time. You know, you want to have some kind of a um, solid color, neon color, ideally a shiny outfit to wear that looks professional and yet fun because you're a kid. Okay. Uh, What you would say, though, Adrian, is that you could say, Madam Surgeon General, I'm 12 years old and I'm the author of the new book, Advice from the Doctor's Daughter, My Adventures with ADHD, blah, 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 blah. And I would like to know what advice you have for kids who are dealing with these with these same challenges as me. Boom. Make sure you rehearse that question. Rehearse that question. There's a chapter in my book, Wisdom of the Men, about George Hamilton. You know who George Hamilton is, right, Rayma? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, I was on a game show with George Hamilton, and I wanted, to, he was a very famous actor. He was so famous, especially in like 1990, like yeah. 97, you know, he was still really famous. And I was on this game show, and I, and I had a strategy. I was going to win my match, and then I was going to pick George Hamilton to play the bonus round with me and I was going to win $5,000 for winning the bonus round and then I was going to hire him with that $5,000 to be in my independent movie. I was going to say, hey George, you know, thanks for helping me win the $5,000. I happen to have this script that I wrote. It'd be perfect for you. Could I pay you this $5,000 to be in my movie? That was going to be, like, this was my whole, like, idea of how I was going to get a famous movie star in my independent film. And I won my match. And they said, okay, Clint, come on down to the stage and tell us which of the celebrities you would like to pick to do the bonus round with for $5,000. And I looked right at George Hamilton and I could not remember his name. What? I could not for the life of me think of his goddamn name. (laughs) I'm just looking at him, I'm looking at him, I'm looking at him for so long. And it was like the longest silence. 
And finally, one of the other celebrities named Vicky Lawrence goes, is he dead? And the whole audience, like a hundred people started hysterically laughing at me. And I go, all right, Vicky, come on down here. So Vicky Lawrence got picked instead of George Hamilton. <sighs> and the question for $5,000, for $5,000, fill in the blank, meet blank. Meat blank, M-E-A-T blank, meat blank. What do you think, Adrian? Meatball. Meatball, Meatball. that's what you say? <laughs> Is that what you say? Is that what you yeah. say, Rama? I say meat Joe Black. No, it's M-E-A-T, meat. Oh, okay. Meatloaf. Okay, I said meatball. Vicky Lawrence, <laughs> Vicky Lawrence goes, oh, I'm so sorry. I wrote Meat Market. What? And then, then, no the credit, and then the show's over and all the celebrities come down to shake my hand. And George Hamilton hands me a, a piece of cardboard that says match game on one side. And on the back of it, it says, he, he goes, you should have picked me. He hands me the card and it says meatballs. Boom. Oh, man. <laughs> so the whole point of this story is, yeah. Adrian. And in yeah. the book, I talk about it. If I had only known what I know today, I would have re rehearsed the line a hundred times that night. I picked the man with the tan, George Hamilton. I want yeah. the man with the tan, George Hamilton. I want right. the man with the tan, George yeah. Hamilton. If I had just yeah. done that a hundred times, if I had known how much pressure it was gonna be, in that moment, I swear to God, I could not for the life of me remember the guy's name, George Hamilton. But if I had just rehearsed it, then I wouldn't have had that problem. But I didn't know to rehearse. And the yeah. whole point of me telling you this story, Adrian, is please, I know it seems like an easy question, but you need to rehearse it at least a hundred times because under pressure, it's not going to be so easy. There's going to be 50 people staring at you and you're going to be sitting right across from a historical figure who is the 15th Surgeon General of the United States of America. Okay, but if you rehearse it 100 times, it'll be easy. And now you're frozen. But you're back. Okay, so question for you. Thank you yeah. for that. Yeah. Adrian's writing her book and the abuse chapters are kind of getting her down and she's going to elbow me under the table right now or kick me in the shin. Um, any advice on that? Like writing painful shit? Uh, my advice is don't hold back. Don't try to make it sound not so bad because you don't want to hurt somebody's feelings or because you're afraid of it or because it's hurting you. Go right into the hurt and be 100% honest with your feelings and your emotions and you'll get something really good. But if you try to censor yourself at all, or if you shy away from the pain, or if you're afraid of any pain, you're going to be reducing the powerfulness of your own work. And in the end, what matters not is the, the moment. What matters is the work. What matters is a book that could be, you know, there are books like the Bible is about thousands of years old, you know, we don't know how long your book is going to be around or how many centuries it's going to be helping people. And you should be writing a book. You're, you're creating a work of art, Adrian. You still with me? Okay. We're trying to find a different venue here. Yeah. Go ahead. Don't worry about the momentary in, uh, pain or, it, or, um, un, or discomfort. And certainly don't worry about anybody else's feelings. And, and in that respect, don't even worry about your own feelings. Just be true to what you're trying to do, which is write something important and powerful. Well, I mean, this is this is what I do. See, are you back? <laughs> oh my gosh, I hate this internet. Is it's not you, is it, Clint? It's not you. I don't think so. I'm That's still here. Over. 
It's not your phone. It's it's on the phone. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Gotcha. I'm, still, I'm on Wi-Fi available. in my house, and I got high-speed Wi-Fi because my next-door neighbor owns Telmex. Pretty cool. All right. Did right, you get but, that from him? All right. And I'm going to send you the recording of all of this too. Okay. And <laughs> and if you don't mind, I would like to make this a what I call celebrity entrepreneur's adventure number 407. Okay, and put it out there for other people to see because this is important stuff. Cool with that? From stuff. Yeah. All right. I think good. she has a problem. Go grab right. my papers or my notes. Okay. Thank All right. You, Clint. you will get that. You'll get the recording of this and the transcript and everything. All right. Awesome. Thank you for that. That's really generous as always. Yeah. All right, so um, are we making a, um, are you coming to Celebrity Launchpad in August? I am. Okay, good. So what is it What what is it that you're most passionate about? Um, lately, the whole disc disorder thing, I'm like a lot of my billboards have avoid back surgery. And I've spent the morning kind of beyond watching some of the videos and audios that, you know, that you have on you know, pitching something. I don't know how to make it more simplified, but if you'd like, I can read some notes. It might bore you, but it might be really good to ideas for a segment to kind of interest people about well, avoiding that. I want to see about... Um, Did you see... get to watch the little sizzler from the NFL player? Did you get to see that? I, I don't think so. I watched... I... Uh, hold on a second. Because that was on, I sent it to Al, I, I think, two, and maybe I watched, you. I watched the two as videos just a with President link to watch. Trump. I watched the two videos you gave me for President Trump. Okay, so that definitely was the Dis Center's group, and I spoke at on Wednesday to 125 people at the Chamber of Commerce. Okay. And on that talk, what I did, Clint, was I took Jennifer Lopez's This Is Me Then, and then how 20 years later, she wrote a new album called This Is Me Now, and then it became a musical. She wrote, directed, produced, and then paid for it. And then, mm -hmm. you know, back 20 years ago, she was with Ben Affleck, and then now they're back together again. And then what I showed them was my former book called The Health of Business, How to Balance Your Life for Greater Returns. And I read to them the back cover about how your business is you, you equal your mind, your body and your spirit, your health is your PowerPoint. Like, so it was the back of that. But then I made another picture of the exact same, exact same pose 20 years later. And I mm -hmm. said, I'm going to flip now the new book that I'm going to write 20 years later is like, this is me then this is me now, instead of the health of business, it's going to be the business of health. And my new book is all about how you and your employees have to stay healthy and avoid injuries and avoid, you know, basically losing your business over health. And so I'm going to take a lot of my management videos I have, you know, been working on over the last two, three, four years because I had to obsess on my company after Michael Gerber trained me about management systems and how to manage a business, especially a small business. So I'm 20 years in 2025 with my clinic that's around 4,000 square feet. So, and a lot of times there's a lot of turnover and things going on. Anyway, so the long and the short is I had them stand up if they had been in business over two years, which most fail under 50 employees. And then I kept having them stand up if they have made it like five years, 10 yep. years. And I still told them the statistics and it was a really good audience. And then I talked about how there was a lady that called me on a Wednesday and she was about 45 minutes from going under for an anterior dissection where they were gonna cut open her neck and go take two discs out and then put screws and you know um, plates and everything in for an anterior dissection. And then she called me to pray with her. And when I got off the phone, I had this gnawing in the sense like in my gut that the question was, could I have stopped that surgery? So that's when I got involved with the Disc Centers of America group, um, which I know on one of the videos you talked about, you're a disc center doctor. And if we could watch the NFL player who's also a disc doctor, I think that might be something that would be a really worthy segment 
Um, do you want to do that together or can you find the email where I sent it from YouTube? Because I think you're going to want to have something to do with that. I created a masterclass with an NFL player who's a 10 year veteran and I highlighted his whole st story. I had him fly here and then I built the entire masterclass and even had him retell his story, paid for all the video to be done. And then I did modules about like recovering from sports injuries, recovering from concussion, recovering from slip discs, um, fractures, etc. Like a lot of different stuff that's the latest technology. So that would be one amazing segment and he's in he'd be interested in doing anything I want to do with marketing and then the other thing is and so now right now I'm taking all that master class I put it into rev.com and then I'm sending it to Steve Kidd who's gonna make it a best-selling book on Amazon um, as soon as I get it edited down and proofed and then the cover made and then the second thing is is I created a master class called the five elements of health and vitality and there's a sizzler video on that I sent Ali and you too. Um, and then now that's becoming a book and that was like four hours of filming. So basically that's gonna be like my signature workshop that's gonna become a book. And then I'm also sending it to a guy at Amazon, like Steve Kidd, who's done this for thousands of people who will make it a best selling book. So that'll be probably done by September by the time I speak. What um, but I'm really kind of, what's that? What does he charge for that? Um, $2,500 if you have the book already done and ready to go. And so the guy that I met, um, I met Brian and Petrie at Mexico City, the one, is, one of the doctors that you had there, uh -huh. and him and his son um, were there. And mm -hmm. then he said, you know, this, I know this guy in South Dakota, and I'm like, well, I'm from like Iowa, you know. And he said, yeah, get a hold of him. His name's Jeremy something. And he can ghost write books, but it's about 15,000. We talked to him about Adrian's book. I said, she's getting kind of stuck on it. And he was like, yeah, well, we'll write it if she gives us the ideas for 15,000. And I'm going, no, we'll just write it ourselves. Yeah. Because like I've already written books and I, I write all kinds of articles. So that's no problem. I'm a very creative person. Um, but Steve Kidd, it's 2,500 for to like literally to do the algorithm to make it a best selling book. He does an ebook and then he gets it on Amazon. And then after that, if you want to pay $3,900, he'll do a press release, a landing page. I can forward you any of the information. Um, he does an interview for you. But a lot of the stuff I'm like, really, you already did for us. Like, there's already big celebrity interviews. A launch page is not hard to do. Um, yeah. If on the next interview you do, I say, go to this, you know, the page and find out more information. That's like, duh. And yeah. um, as far as all that goes, and then he gives you 20% off every time you do another book. So it's pretty good for Amazon bestseller to be $2,500 to get that done. And he'll have it done in two weeks, he said, once I get the book out. So that's kind of cool. And so that's what I'm doing now is I'm going to try to make some of my former, and I have my first book was like 2007, and that's about 300 pages. And it took me a long ass time to write because it's a really good book, but I feel like it's, not as good as I would want it to be. I could write and rewrite that book a million times over. So, um, <laughs> but I'll probably do that and edit it and then get that back out as a revision or like, you know, a 2.0 type of thing of the revised version of the health of business. And then I realized all my videos that I've done for internally for small businesses and mostly healthcare offices and management, I'm going to take those, put them into rev.com and then just make sure to clean them up and then have a book on managing a small business, um, a healthcare business, you know, how to stay in business with that, what healthcare needs, what's broken in the model. So, but my obsession right now is to build my clinic and then sell it. So that's what I've been trying to do. Like okay. probably recently I decided in the next five years, I'm going to definitely have it either built to scale and sell or I'll have doctors in there and I will be pulling out of it. But that's, that's kind of the goal. Okay. A lot of information. Okay. Um, so here's the thing. Um, what we're looking for is something that a lot of people can relate to. Okay. Okay. So. I think I propose that low back pain 
It's one of the most common causes of work disability in the United States. And if people are on disability for more than six months, they are most likely not going to return to work. It's the most expensive reason for work disability. It's estimated that 2% of the U.S. workforce will be compensated for back-related injuries. You know, um, what else? The, according to a study in Spine in the last 15 years, there's been an eight-fold jump in back fusion surgeries. Um, I found this interesting because I've been reading all, like, into the research books about it. Um, this is the downside of surgery, right? There's... There could be a reaction to anesthesia or other drugs. You could get blood clots in your legs or lungs. You could bleed. You could have infections, heart attacks, stroke, recurrent disc herniations, permanent nerve damage. The orthopedic technology article said that surgical fusion alternatives, quote unquote, and spinal decompression, because, the, you know, then there's the alternative of spinal decompression. Let's see here. Okay, so okay. pain, um, back pain, mm-hmm. back, back pain, pain and failed back surgery syndrome okay because because look we're looking for the timely hook and you have one um september which is a good one september is pain awareness month oh cool even better all right awesome and so about the related to like you know if we're talking about slip disc causing as a major cause of low back pain right and then somehow we could tie it back to you know that I'm really obsessed with having helping people avoid back surgery and that I've been a practicing physician for 20 years doing that and you know I've stopped a lot of surgeries and I don't know if that story matters about that lady calling me and then me convincing her that you know we did everything we could and that she'll have the healthiest neck possible when she's going to undergo surgery and when I hung up the phone Um, it ate at the fiber of my guts. And then I started seeking out other measures in order to help people avoid back surgery. And some of those things are um, decompression, class four lasers, electroanalgesia, um, shockwave therapy, acupuncture, and chiropractic and PT at the end of the treatment. And um, so there's that. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. So all right every segment starts with like i i just found this thing so i pasted it in but what we really start with is right here available for in studio and virtual appearances okay okay Mm -hmm. that's where it all begins and then because that's what we want. And then we have September is Pain Awareness Month. Okay. So. And then I propose that we talk about low back pain being a major cause of problems, but failed back surgery syndrome is even worse than living with low back pain. There's yeah, a study. No, no, no. no? You're not on TV. You're not on TV to sell. You're on TV to help. Right. Agreed. Okay. So all we want to do is. So what's the point here? Pain Awareness Month to raise public awareness of issues in the area of pain and pain management. Yep. That's what this is about. Okay. Your job is to raise public awareness of issues in the area of pain and pain management. So. What's the most important issue in the area of pain and pain management to you? I would say it would be the how common it is for people to have severe low back pain at some point in their life and how much it's going to affect their ability to work and to do any activities of daily living. That would be my concern for them is how back bad back pain is so bad, you know, it leads people to get addicted to opioids or, um, you know, they have risky epidurals and injections. Um, they stop doing all the stuff they love because they can't. And 
over time it gets worse not better in most cases that would be my okay so the risks so the risks are opioid addiction risky epidurals Um, and failed back surgery failed surgeries Mm -hmm. uh risky epidurals what do you, do you become addicted to epidurals or what epidurals can because the needles are so big they can you know they can actually pierce through the lining around the spinal cord and cause permanent injury so most of the time they just don't work but the needles are so long and big that there's a high chance of having you know damage to the spinal cord having damage okay. to the meninges like they're they're risky there's a huge risk involved and a lot of times like i said they don't even work when they do even if there is a chance they could work they don't last and then the other part is the medications like if they were taking over the counter medication and mixing them there's a huge chance of them perforating their guts and bleeding in their you know in their gut so um, patients from medications yeah like there's over the counter which have a lot of risks involved with liver damage and perforations and bleeds in their guts and then there's you know prescribed medication where they could become addicts to the painkillers really easily so there's a high chance that they could become okay. all right so um what is your solution what is your um, to, to people of how uh, to get out of pain? To be open to non-surgical, non-invasive means. Non-surgical, non-invasive means. Pursue such as... Surgical, non-invasive remedies? Yeah. Okay. All right. What else? Um. So that would be like, it would be spine non-surgical spinal decompression there's class four laser therapy now for pain okay but what are what are your other what's your other advice for people who are in pain um my advice would be like to tag on to some of like even like how trump had that where he said i've endorsed your profession um because that that guy that he was that was talking to him is my mentor and he's the head of disc centers and basically he's been a chiropractor for 25 years right and so he's one that like trump really likes chiropractic and then there's dr norman sheely he's an md and a phd okay. and he's a neuro hey 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 what is your advice to people who are in pain um to go seek out the opportunity- non-surgical non-invasive remedies what else i yeah. want three other three other suggestions okay um maybe we could say lose weight i mean i don't want to hurt their feelings but okay so well things that make disc problems worse if they have a back problem because of we're disc. not necessarily talking about disc okay we're talking um, about pain and pain management mm-hmm. what's your advice uh, Pain and pain management. Um, like I say, if there's there's chiropractors that have a whole bunch of stuff that they can do for patients with acupuncture and electroanalgesia machines, laser therapy, chiropractic care, decompression therapy, like there's a lot of alternatives that can happen. Um, what else would I say about pain that they'd need to get their inflammation under control, Good. which, you know, is a matter of like, there could be a functional medicine approach without calling it functional medicine, like taking fish oils and eating less inflammatory foods, like sugary foods and things, um, drinking more water. Cause basically you're saying, what can we do about pain? Which is freaking a huge. Is, that, is drinking more water part of inflammation? I think that drinking more water would probably help with inflammation, but it's definitely going to help with healing. You know. Okay, good. So that's that's part of inflammation. And one more thing. Um, working on their posture, maybe. 
Um, I would probably not necessarily say like, talking about back pain. Okay. Got it. Um, hmm. Well, I do think if people sleep longer and sleep more, they would, their body would recover if they got more deep sleep. And, you know, what I would say to them personally is every hour before midnight is as if you slept too, because of the deep sleep that needs to happen to have the body restore and heal itself. So I so say sleep at time. Nighttime is a key time for pain. Well, yeah, they need to get good restorative sleep. I don't know about nighttime is a good time for pain, but I bet you that a lot of them are having disrupted sleep because of pain, not necessarily back pain, but um, they need to get better sleep. Everybody does if they're going to heal any kind of disease or any kind of illness in their body. Um. Okay, I see. You want to go more generic is what you're saying on the pain thing. No, sweetie. What I just did there was I made this is how to get out of pain. See that? Let me get my glasses. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Get it? Oh, that's cool. So, oh, that's very cool. All right. Awesome. Okay. okay. Got it. You got so, a mnemonic. Okay. Now we got celebrities who suffered with pain. Well, I could tell you, um, remember that guy that was on Home Alone, the dad, John Hurt, I want to say his name was? Hold on. Don't you see what I'm doing? I'm just looking, right? I, right. I don't have to invent this kind of stuff. I'm looking for big celebrities. Celebrities. 40 celebrities. Oh my gosh. Celebrities, celebrities who cope with chronic pain. Paula Abdul, back pain. Melanie Griffith, Bono, Elizabeth Taylor, Michael Jackson, chronic pain. Mm-hmm. So let's go. I mean, let's see if we can find... Do you think as much as it doesn't have to lead into it, Clint? Yep. What do you mean? Do you think we could mention, like, um, Tiger Woods, who's had... Like, do you think we could mention Tiger Woods, who's had, you know, pain and different... Had multiple surgeries for different injuries? And that, like, Tiger Woods, how he still is living with pain, even though, you know, he pursued surgical means or mentioning how like John Hurt who was in Home Alone how he to deal with his pain he got a surgery a back surgery and he died within six months or is that just too like uh, what we're negative? looking for what we're looking for are the most relevant current celebrities okay you'll never make money by just working harder money is a reflection of your energy body Imagine being a world-class athlete only to be sidelined by a low back injury. Or being a superstar actor unable to perform in your next film because of debilitating back pain. Back pain does not discriminate, and this is the reality for many celebrities who suffer from back pain just like the rest of us. But how do they manage their pain and stay active? In this video, we'll take a closer look at some of the most famous celebrities with back pain and learn about their specific treatment plans and coping mechanisms. But to briefly introduce myself, my name is Dr. Grant Elliott, and we have helped thousands with back pain and satica fully recover through our one-on-one -on -one online coaching program. And I'm excited to share some insights today. Our first celebrity, the golf goat, 
Tiger Woods, one of the greatest golfers of all time, but he's also one of the most famous athletes. With okay, so pain. what I was looking for was his list. Surgeries with. Okay, so here's his list: Tiger Woods, Serena Williams, Lady Gaga, George Clooney, mm -hmm. Arnold Schwarzenegger. See, mm -hmm. and those, those are, you know, you everybody knows who they are. So, which three of these yeah. do you want? you want? Tiger Woods. How about Probably Tiger George Woods? Clooney? Lady Gaga and George Clooney. Those are the big three, right? I think so. Yeah. So Arnold Schwarzenegger is kind of cool, but he's older, you know, so I don't know. Yeah. Let's see what Lady Gaga's pain was. Chronic pain. Mm -hmm. Okay. Let's watch this video. I was wondering what it was like to open up about the chronic pain that you've experienced. And also for Chris, what it was like to film those scenes. It's okay. Um, it's hard, but it's liberating too. You know, the main reason knowing what you filmed, knowing what I, uh, I know to be included in the film because I was told that there were moments like that, um, there is an element and a very strong piece of me that believes, believes that pain is a microphone and it, my pain really does me no good unless I transform it into something that is. So I hope that people watching it that do struggle with chronic pain know that they're not alone. I hope that they see the message at the end of the film that I know to be there. I wanted that to be there for people to be able to reach out about mental health, anxiety, as well as chronic pain and uh, mental illness. And, you know, it's, it's freeing for me because, and I, I mean to say this because I want people that struggle with it to hear me. They're okay. So that's enough. Now we're going to find imagery for these, for these three celebrities. And the imagery I want is usually red carpet imagery uh, because, that's, because that's the best kind of imagery. So do you prefer the white picture or the black picture? Which do you think? Uh, this one. So I'm going to start pasting in these pictures here. Copy image. Oh, we got both of them, but I'm going to only take one. All right, so here we go. And we're going to say it is um, Tiger Woods, Lady Gaga and George Clooney suffer from chronic pain. Mm -hmm. I mean, see that? See what that does? Okay, so, and I'm gonna be sending you this whole thing. Um, Thank you. Yeah, so let's get their pictures now. Let's get a Tiger Woods picture. like to get him on uh, the red carpet even though he's a golfer but because as I said red carpet is what it's all about well looks like it's just all golf for Tiger Woods so we're going to go with a golf picture very famous sufferer of pain. Mm
him we can get. Um, there we go. There's George. Mm Okay, so now we have three big celebrities with our thing. Then we have these risks, risks associated with... Now, these risks, right? These risks are... How would you characterize these risks? These risks are... Um, I would call them epidemic almost. Pain, epi pain yeah. epidemic risks. Yeah. Epidemic yeah. pain risks. Mm-hmm. Okay. Now, when you were talking about Michael Gerber, like, mm -hmm. I'm just curious if you could clarify, like, what, what were you really trying to say? Um, I was trying to say that you know, I've studied under him and one of the reason, well, his books are all about why small business in, is in America fail, yep. right? And what to do about it. And yep. so his e-myth book, a lot yep. of the people problem, he said is based on the fact that there aren't management systems in an office. Okay. And that's why when somebody leaves the the boss doesn't even know how to do anything. And then they lose their ass basically because of that. So okay. now let's do your bio here. Okay. Now, do you okay. have a book on pain? Um, not technically. No. Well, is there I a mean, book you could republish? Yeah, my book, book, the health, of, the health of business is all about my journey through chronic pain. Honestly, that's what it is. Great. So I do have, yeah. Why don't you change that title? Why don't you republish that book as My Journey Through Chronic Pain? Or okay. why don't you change that title to Journey Through Chronic Pain? So Dr. Rama yeah. Wagner okay. uh, is the author of Journey through chronic pain. All right. And, um, okay, so yeah. did you yourself have to get out of pain or was it business pain that you were talking about there? Yes. You no, had to get no, out? I definitely, I had to get out of pain. I had fibromyalgia, chronic fatigue. I had okay. autoimmune disease. Mm -hmm. Okay, hold on. Which details her mm -hmm. experiences with fibromyalgia autoimmune disease Auto you could call it thyroid disease if you wanted disease thyroid disease and what else anything else um i had chronic fatigue Anything else? I would say I had irritable bowel syndrome. Anything else? Um, depression. From the pain. Okay, great. Um, how many patients have you helped over the course of your, how many year career? How many years have you been in, in the healing wellness industry? 20 years. Okay. And I'm a third generation chiropractor, which is kind of a pedigree. 
in its own right. I've treated, honestly, I've done probably 250,000 adjustments. I've worked nonstop in my field since I started. Okay, how many patients? Um, thousands. How many thousands? Um, I don't know. I've never thought about it, but. Well, let's, let's try I don't know. I don't know how, how many, many thousands. How many per <laughs> I week? mean, I, there's how so many, many files week? in my office. How many per okay. week? I, I see about 30 new patients. I see about 30 new patients a month. Okay, great. And so, then sometimes I mean, just, more. Just okay. with that, we got mm -hmm. 30 times 12. That's 360 mm -hmm. times 20. That's 7,200. So we could easily say more than 7,500 patients, right? Yeah, easily. Mm -hmm. Okay. So she, she has helped more than 7,500 mm -hmm. patients um, overcome pain. Chronic. Yeah, overcome pain. That's a fact. Okay. That's your bio. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. Okay. All right. All right. Now, thank you. Yeah. Now let's get the easy part, which is your contact information. Dr. Raymond Wagner and your cell phone. 352. Yep. 352. Yeah. 409. Yep. 0177. Okay. And your email? Rama Jean, R A M A H J E A N at gmail.com. Okay. So, uh, what is your website? It's wagnerchiro.com. Okay, that's good. Now, why don't you have Wagner? Why don't you have um, Dr. Rama at WagnerChiro.com or Dr. at, at WagnerChiro.com? I don't know. And I used to have that, but you should have that. Having a Gmail. Okay. Let me ask you this: Do you think Tony would have like Tony Tony Michael at gmail.com? Probably not. No. Okay. I mean, Tony Robbins, right? Tony Robbins is yeah. not going to be at Gmail. Tony uh, Robbins is like Tony at TonyRobbins.com. Thank you. And isn't that what you should be? Okay. okay. Got it. Right? Okay. So I want to see Rayma at... Right. Wagner. So they can remember it too. Yeah. Cairo. Is it what, Wagner Cairo? Cairo. Com? Dot com. Yep. Okay. Yep. That's good. Okay. Right. So then I want Wagner... Cairo. Good. All right. Now I need a good picture of you in um, scrubs or a lab coat or both. Do you have that? And I just got them done last weekend. So I will get that to you. Okay. So you need one made so. into a book cover because we need to okay. put it in a book cover right here. Okay. So put it into a book cover. And then that would be the one called Journey Through Chronic Pain? Yeah. Okay. Exactly. Gotcha. All right. And now we can make your pitch for you. Can we say with the pain thing, instead of acupuncture, even though I have a degree in that, could we say alternative treatments? 
Well, how does that differ from non-surgical, non-invasive remedies? True. See, you'll see at Celebrity Launchpad that, you know, one of the examples I use is a um, marriage therapist. And she, you know, she offers as a resource in one of her interviews, you know, if you need a marriage therapist, you should go to, uh, if you need relationship health, you could go to the American Psychological Association and they will, right? I mean, pursue non-surgical, how about, Non-surgical, non-invasive remedies, alternative therapies. You want to do that? I don't know. I'm just asking. Yeah. Alternative therapies like acupuncture and chiropractic, right? Yes. Right. Good. Yeah. What are some non-surgical, non-invasive remedies besides acupuncture and chiropractic? decompression okay and what else spinal decompression yep laser lasers and what else anything else spinal um so decompression. you got decompression therapy and then you got laser therapy and you got yep. shock waves like shock, shock wave therapy mm-hmm Okay, good. Mm -hmm. Very good. Inflammation control and then nighttime, get better sleep. Okay, great. Here we go. I like it. Here's, okay. So um, the this really is a, a segment on are you needlessly, are you? Um, are you living in pain? Are you living? Trapped in pain. Are you trapped in pain? Are you stuck in a cycle of pain? Has chronic pain destroyed your life? Are you trapped in pain? I like that. Okay. 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 So here we go. September is, let me start a timer so I know I'm doing this good. I got to do this good. September is good, pain. Do it good. Awareness. Do it great. Thank you. September is pain awareness month. And the American Chronic Pain Association declared this month to raise public awareness of issues in the area of pain and pain management. Tiger Woods, Lady Gaga, and George Clooney all famously suffer from chronic pain. And my name is Dr. Rayma Wagner. I'm the author of Journey Through Chronic Pain, which details my personal experiences with fibromyalgia, autoimmune disease, thyroid disease, chronic fatigue, irritable bowel syndrome, and depression from pain. And over the course of my 20-year career, I've helped more than 7,500 patients overcome pain, including myself. And my question for your audience is, are you trapped in pain and want to get out? Now, there is an epidemic of pain in our country. And the risks of living trapped in pain include opioid addiction, failed surgeries, injuries from epidurals, complications from over-the-counter medications which can include liver damage perforations of the stomach and bleeding and i say there is a way for you to get out of pain p 
Pursue non-surgical, non-invasive remedies. For example, decompression therapy, laser treatments, shockwave therapy, A, alternative therapies and treatments. Acupuncture and chiropractic are excellent alternatives to surgery and living with pain. I, inflammation control. Inflammation is the root of, of most ailments in the body. And if you are suffering from pain, reducing your inflammation could be the key to your escape. Some ideas for reducing or controlling your inflammation would be fish oil, eating less inflammatory foods, and drinking more water. And then N stands for nighttime, which means get better sleep. And I know it's really difficult to sleep when you're in pain, but like your number one job when you are trying to get out of the trap of chronic pain is getting a good night's sleep because that's when your body heals itself. As you can tell, I'm so passionate about this because I lived in pain for so long and I, I have helped so many people and that's the rewarding part of the work that I do is helping people to get out of pain. And I say, you don't need to be trapped in pain. And September is the month when you're gonna become aware, and I want everyone in your audience to be aware that you don't have to live in pain. Three minutes, perfect. Good? You like that? I love it. That was great. All right, awesome. <laughs> Okay, so let me send you this. What is your current email address? Ramajean at gmail.com. R A M A H. Yeah. J E A N. Got it. Thank you. Here's the PDF. Do me a favor and confirm that you got the PDF. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now the book cover that I want, let me show you a good one. Okay. This is one of the best book covers I've seen for a doctor in a long time. Really, this is so great. See that? Okay. Okay. Yeah, I just took some pictures just like that. So that should be easy. Awesome. That's what we're looking for. All right. Just that big, bold words like that. Yeah. Orange, even maybe. Journey. Orange and yep. blue. Just copy this exact thing journey okay. through chronic pain dr rama wagner period that's it okay okay yeah that's awesome thank you for showing me that yep did you take a screenshot of it or something like I that i did yeah okay sure did. all right great uh when we're done Zoom will generate the transcript and I'll send you the transcript. And please, let's see how many minutes into this are we? I'm going to stop this share, see how many minutes we are. I don't know how many minutes we are into this. We're about um, an hour into this recording. You'll find me performing your Thank script you. for you, right? So pull out that the, yeah. the words out of the transcript and turn it into a script. And then memorize that script beyond okay. memorization. Because if you want to have fun okay. at this event, you cannot be worrying about mm -hmm. what you're supposed to say next. Okay? You have to know okay. what's next. Mm -hmm. And it's really, it's okay. all straight off of that one page that I generated. Like you saw me going okay. right down the page, right? Yep. So, so um, that really is 
the key to having fun and doing well okay. at this right. event is doing your memorization before you get to the event. Okay, got it. I'll do it. Yeah, really, please do yourself a favor. Memorize it before you show up. Okay. Because it, it, look, I don't, I don't really care if you say the words exact, exact words that I said. What I care about is that you know what the hell you're saying, and that you know what the segment is supposed to be. Because if you know what to say, then it's easy to say it. <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> that makes sense. What's so funny? Yeah. Because that's a funny thing to say. It's just the truth. It is the truth. I know. It's funny. I don't yeah, know why unfortunately, a lot of people they don't know what to say. They're trying to they're trying to figure out what to say. That's not what we're looking for. Okay. You cannot be great. Like you know, there's all these people who are doing improv comedy. You think they're just making that stuff up right on the spot? No, they've okay. rehearsed these bits a million times, and they're thinking, how can I put this bit in here? How can I put this bit in here? How can I get into some rehearsed material that I know works good? Okay, hundred okay. percent, gotcha. Loud and All clear, right. sir. All right, good. <laughs> That's the way it goes. Okay. Because otherwise, you go off on tangents. You know, <laughs> you get lost, and and there goes your three minutes. Yeah. Okay. Now I want you to yeah. show up in the costume that you have your book cover, right? On okay. So okay. this is. is Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday from 10 a.m. to 8 p.m. each day. And then on Saturday, we take you out to a nice dinner to celebrate. You're having booked yourself on at least three shows because you will have already booked yourself on at least three shows by Saturday night. So Saturday and Sunday, you need to wear the costume. Okay. Bring okay. bring your laptop. So it's not neon. It's not neon. Okay. What is, it's not going to be fuchsia. Or, it's not fuchsia. It's not neon. It's the what is, white. What is your scrubs? Yeah, scrubs. What are the scrubs? What color? Usually white. I have navy scrubs. I have navy. Yes. I have yes. maroon. I have maroon. Yeah, one of those colors. Whichever color okay. you think looks better. Okay. Okay, I think navy is probably better. Okay, navy got it. Navy scrubs with the white lab coat. Okay, gotcha. And the lab coat says your name, Dr. Raymond Wagner. Yep, so do the scrubs. Okay, good. Mm -hmm. All okay. right, good. I Very like good. it. All right, should I wear a stethoscope around my neck? You can. You definitely okay. can. Okay. All right. That's a great prop. All right. So it's not going to be the whole neon. It's not going to be. It's going to be that for everything hey. almost. Hey, look, you know, if you... Navy blue. What is that? Dark blue? Is that like this color yeah. right here? Like your shirt almost. You don't have any bright blue scrubs? Um, I can see what I can do. I have a neon yellow scrub. If I could get the... Well, if the that coat's over it, would you write, rather have that? Like a really... It's like ugly yellow in a good way. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I like like neon yellow. Okay. Yeah. All right. And then just wear that under the jacket. Yeah. Then I have neon, but I'm still in a costume. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Good. All right. I can All do right, it. Great. Do you have any questions? No. I'm thankful for you. And this is great because I want to fixate on pain for a while anyway with all of my media and PR stuff. So this is a great start. Awesome. There you go. September is Pain Awareness Month. That's your month, baby. All right. All right. I'm excited. You have your hotel? I have. I'm at Aria with you guys. Good. Very good. All right. And You're I just awesome. got my flights today, so I'll send I'll send that over to Allie. But yeah. We I'm don't need excited. your flights. We don't need your flights. We're not involved in okay. any transportation right. got in it. Las Vegas. We're only involved in transportation in Acapulco. Okay. Gotcha. Gotcha. Okay. Well, great. All I'm right. all set. I'm very excited. I'll see you in a couple weeks. Okay, fantastic. We'll Thanks see you so in much Vegas. for today, Clint. It's all awesome. right. And yeah, do me a favor and I'll, just confirm. I'm going to text you the link to the audio and the transcript. Confirm that you got it and you can open it and that it's good. Okay. Okay. We'll do. We'll do. Okay. Thanks so much, right. Raymond. Bye.
Thank you. Bye. Have a great night. You too.